for the song till the storm passes by. Amen. Were you blessed? Amen. Turn your Bibles, please, to the book of Genesis. I hope you have your handout. Uh, are we lacking a handout or do we have enough handout for everybody? Uh, if you have a handout, please uh, raise it. Let me see. Okay. Thank you so much. That's good. I hope you will keep those and we will not have the time to go through all the verses. But I hope that you will use that as a Bible study to go through all the verses and uh, study the verses that we do not have, that we cannot read uh, here uh, during the service. Uh, we would like to greet Brother Chris, a uh, happy birthday. Brother Chris, would you stand? Today is his birthday. What is Amen. Brother Chris? Amen. Amen. Brother Chris. La Parat is Brother Chris. Okay. Uh, he brought some food. Okay. But we have probably need to pray for the food so that the Lord will multiply it. And uh, there will be uh, enough food and there will be, uh, we will still have uh, leftovers after we eat, okay? The feeding will be 5,000. But Brother Chris, uh, happy birthday. And uh, again, do pray for Brother Eddie. Where is Brother Eddie? Brother Eddie, would you stand? That's Brother Eddie and Brother Cyrus. Again, would you kindly stand? They will be going home tomorrow. And both of them will be getting married, I think, in February. Or February, Brother Eddie, and uh, April will be Brother Cyrus and uh, Sister Gladys. So you pray for them. Amen. Amen. So we all stand and uh, let's uh, turn our Bibles to the book of Genesis chapter 49 for our Bible study this evening. Again, our theme for the month of January is always about in Christ. And so we will study a lesson about the Lord Jesus Christ tonight. Turn to Genesis chapter 49 and we will read verse number 10 all together. Reading begin. The scepter shall not depart from Judah, nor a lawgiver from between his feet, until she will come, and unto him shall the gathering of the people be. Lord Heavenly Father, we thank you for bringing us here together, Lord, this evening. And we thank you, Lord, for the songs. Thank you, Lord, even for the time where we can come together and pray. And thank you, Lord, for your word tonight. Lord, I pray that uh, you will bless your word this evening so that every one of us will learn something about our Savior, about our Lord Jesus Christ, and how blessed we are because of a Savior like Him. Lord, help us to, uh, to grasp the message tonight and take this message to heart. And Lord, we also thank you even for Sister Deborah that you have allowed her to come and visit us, Lord, this evening. We pray, Lord, that you will bless her, use us, Lord, to be a blessing to her. Thank you also for Chris and for his birthday today. We also pray for Eddie and Cyrus even as they go back to Kenya tomorrow. And uh, other brothers here who will be going home very soon. Uh, Lord, we do not know what your plans are for their life, but we know, Lord, that you have great plans, good plans for each one of them. In each one of us. Uh, dear Holy Spirit, we ask that you bless the message now. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you so much. You may be seated. Now, the text na binasa natin tonight. In our text, Jacob, or otherwise known as Israel, is in his deathbed. And his sons are gathered beside him. And he gives the destiny of its son. So you may want to write the word destiny in your notes. Uh, starting with verse number verse number 3. For example, the Bible says in verse number 3, Reuben, thou art my firstborn, my might, and the beginning of my strength, and the excellency of dignity, and the excellency of power, unstable as water, thou shalt not excel. Because thou wentest up into thy father's bed, then defilest thou it, uh, he went up to my cows. Now, again, Jacob is in his deathbed. And inipo niya lahat yung kanyang mga anak. And he gave a prophecy what uh, each one of them will uh, what each one of them will become. He gives the destiny of its son. Now, when it comes to Judah, nung pagdating niya kay Judah, na may sasabihin sa kay Judah, now remember Judah, if you will read from Genesis chapter 4 verse number 33, he was the one 
who was willing to take, to take the place of Benjamin. You remember that story na pinaiwan si Benjamin doon sa uh, Egypt because they found the, the Pharaoh's cup, okay, doon sa kanyang sack. And uh, Judah was the one who told uh, Joseph at the time, they did not recognize him, na uh, he begged if it's possible for him to take the place of Benjamin. Now, when, when Jacob uh, came to Judah and uh, to tell him about what he will become, dito sa binanggit ni Jacob and Judah, we find a piece of puzzle of the prophecy of the Messiah who would be a substitute, okay? Who would be a substitute and sacrifice for the sins of mankind. So in verse number 10, the scepter shall not depart from Judah, nor a lawgiver from between his feet, until Shiloh. Now you underline the word Shiloh. Uh, the word Shiloh was used several times in the Old Testament, and there is a place called Shiloh. Shiloh is the place where the tabernacle was first erected. Doon tinayuuna yung tabernacle in Shiloh. But this Shiloh here is not that place. Hindi ito yung lugar. Shiloh is a reference to Messiah, to our Lord Jesus Christ. The word Shiloh means, you write the meaning, it means peace, it means rest, or security. In Isaiah chapter 9, verse number 6, the Bible tells us, or oh, the Lord Jesus Christ is called the Prince of Peace. That is one of the names that was given to the Lord Jesus Christ. And in Matthew chapter 11, 28 and 29, the Lord Jesus Christ said, And I will give you rest. He said, And you shall find rest unto your soul. Now, why is the Lord Jesus Christ called Shiloh? Why is he called peace? Why is he called rest? Why is he called uh, our security? Now, a survey of scripture provides a number of a number of reasons. Number one, let me just give you five things very quickly tonight. Number one, through Christ, sa pamamagitan ng ating Panginoon, our Shiloh, our peace, our rest, our security, our adversary have been defeated. Our adversary have been or have been defeated. Now, we have a very powerful enemy. The Bible tells us in 1 Peter chapter 5, verse number 8. Uh, it's not in your notes. You may want to write this in your notes. 1 Peter chapter 5, verse number 8 uh, says this. Uh, be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary the, the devil. Our adversary or our enemy is the devil. And he is a very powerful enemy. Ephesians chapter 6, verse number 12. The Bible says... For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against the spiritual wickedness in high places. Folks, we have an enemy. We have a very powerful adversary. We cannot defeat our adversary uh, by ourselves. But through our Lord Jesus Christ, our enemy or our adversary had been, had been defeated. Amen? Amen? We have been freed. We have been delivered from the control, from the rule, from the rule of Satan. If you will read in, in John chapter 8, verse 4, Jesus said, John 8, 44, the Lord Jesus Christ said, you are of your father, the devil. See, before we got saved, Satan was our father. But if you will read in John 1, 12, when we received the Lord Jesus Christ, as our personal Savior, we became the sons of God. God is our Father now, so we were delivered from the control of, of Satan. We have gone from one destiny to another. The power of Satan over our life has been broken. Wala nang kapangyarihan si Satanas sa ating mga buhay. Amen? Amen. Unless, we, unless we want to. Because he will still try to court us. He will still try to tempt us. But the power of Satan in our life has been broken. 
the Lord Jesus Christ has already given us the victory. Romans chapter 8, 6 verse 18, uh, the Bible says, Being then made free from sin, ye became the servants of righteousness. So we are no longer servants of Satan. We are no longer sons of Satan. We are children of God. Amen? Amen. Through the Lord Jesus Christ. That, that's why the Lord Jesus Christ is our peace. The Lord Jesus Christ is our rest. We have peace now. Why? Because our enemy is already defeated. Amen. Our Savior, our Shiloh, the Lord Jesus Christ defeated our adversary already. And that's why we already have peace. The second thing that I want to show you is our awareness has been activated. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, our awareness has been activated. You know, as a Christian, we know a lot of things that people who are, who are not saved uh, doesn't know. Marami tayong nalalaman bilang mga Kristiyano na hindi pa nalalaman ng mga tao na wala sa Panginoon. Are you with me? A person who is not saved, according to Proverbs 4.19, is walking in darkness. Proverbs 4.19, the Bible says, The way of the wicked is as darkness. They know not at what they stumble. It's the Bible who says that. Now, through the Lord Jesus Christ, we are assured of our destiny. Sa pamamagitan ng ating Panginoong Iso Kristo, tayo ay nakatatiyak na sa ating patutunguhan. Okay? If you ask people, uh, ask your friends, ask your office mates, when you die, and be serious about this, when you're talking about this, you have to be serious uh, with them. You ask them, do you know for sure where you will go when you die? Many of them will say they don't know where they are going. And, uh, uh, but as Christians, because because of the Lord Jesus Christ, we are assured of our destiny. We know where we are going. Amen? Amen. We are heaven bound. And that gives us absolute peace. How do we know that? John 3.18, the Bible says, He that believeth in Him is not condemned, but he that believeth not is condemned already. In John 11, 25, the Lord Jesus Christ said, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. So, our awareness, we are already aware. We know where we are going. Why? Because of the Lord Jesus Christ. We know we are going to heaven, not because of our goodness. We know where we are going to heaven because of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Number three, first is that our adversary has been defeated. Our Savior, our Shiloh defeated our enemy already. Especially when he rose from the dead, he defeated the enemy. Our awareness has been activated. Uh, we are now walking in the light. Number three, our anxieties can be delegated. Our anxieties can be delegated. You know, this world is full of things uh, that uh, we can worry about. Dito sa sandibutan na ito, maraming mga bagay-bagay na uh, mag-cause ng ating worry. Okay? For example, sometimes we worry about our health. Uh, we worry about our health, or we worry about our jobs, we worry about our finances, we worry about many things. And maybe some of you tonight, you have something that you are, that, that worries you. Okay? You have something that worries you. And you ask that question, what will happen to me now? Okay, what will happen to me in the future? Well, I have good news for you tonight. Jesus Christ, the Lord Jesus Christ, is our shield. He is our peace. He gives us rest. Okay? We have security in the Lord Jesus Christ. And that means our anxieties can be delegated. You don't have to, you don't have to worry about anything now. By the way, our number one worry should be the destiny of our soul. Where are we going when we die? But even our greatest worry has been solved by our Savior already. 
Now to be able to delegate, you write the word delegate in your note, to be able to delegate a problem to someone who can solve it, is so calming, it is so refreshing, it is so restful. The, the, you, you have no pressure. You know, if you are saved tonight, kapag ikaw ay ligtas sa gabi ito, you have accepted Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, you don't have to worry about anything. You don't have to worry about anything. Why? Because we have a Savior. Man. He offers us peace. He offers us rest. He offers us rest. Again, that verse. Turn to Matthew. Balikan natin yung Matthew. I mentioned that verse earlier. Tingnan nyo ito. Do you, do you remember that song, What a Friend We Have in Jesus? Amen. There is, a, there is a line in that song that says, Oh, what peace we often forfeit. Oh, what needless pain we bear. All because we do not carry everything to God in prayer. And that's very, very true. Tignan nyo ito. Matthew chapter 11. Some quotes this as the sweetest verse in the Bible. The Lord Jesus said here, verse number 28, he said, come unto me. See, we have a divine invitation. Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden. He's inviting you to come to him. Kung meron ng problema, if you have something that really bothers you, listen to the Lord Jesus Christ tonight. He says here, come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. He did not say, I might or I will try to give you rest. He said, I will give you rest. And then verse number 29, he said, Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and ye shall find rest unto your soul. We have the promise of our Savior. Psalms 50, verse number 15. I will dwell on this a little bit because I know that sometimes we worry about a lot of things. But, you have a Savior. Jesus Christ is our Shiloh. He is our peace. He is our rest. Chapter 15, verse number 15, the Bible says, And call upon me in the day of trouble. I will deliver thee, and thou shalt glorify me. Another wonderful promise. When I remember this verse, I think of Brother Louis Fumar. Okay? Psalms 107, verses 19 and 28, the Bible says, then they cry unto the Lord in their trouble, and He bringeth them out of their distresses. You can also read 2 Chronicles 33. My friend, if you want to, you can take your burdens. If you want to, you can take your fears. If you want to, you can take your worries to the Lord. It's up to you. It's up to you. 1 Peter 5, 7, the Bible says, Casting all your cares upon him for he cares for you. If you want, you can take your burdens, your fears, your words to the Lord. He will bear your head low. Psalms 37. Psalms 37 and verse number 7. The Bible says this, Psalms 37 and verse number 7. Listen to this verse. The Lord said, rest in the Lord. You see that word rest? That is Shiloh. Peace, peace, Rest or security, rest in the Lord and wait patiently for Him. Fret not thyself because of Him who prospereth in His way, because of the man who bringeth wicked devices to pass. The Bible says, Rest in the Lord. In John 16 33, the Lord Jesus Christ said, These things have I spoken unto you that ye might have peace. That ye might have peace. So our anxieties or our worries can be delegated. You can, you can give the Lord your worries, your cares. There is no use worrying about your health. If you get sick, just pray for your health. And then just, just trust the Lord with your health. Amen? Amen? I know some of you need a job. We are praying for some of you here to find a job. But uh, you can have peace. You don't have to worry about your job. Okay? It's either God will give you a job here or God has a greater plan for you. Amen. Okay? Amen. God has a better plan for you. God is working out His plan in your life, in my life. So you don't have to worry about anything. All you have to do is trust the Lord. You can delegate 
your worries, your anxieties to the Lord Jesus Christ because He can solve all your problems for you. Our affairs are arranged when death comes. Our affairs are arranged when death comes. Now, the Christian or the believer has the answer to life's greatest questions. Ang isang Kristiyano, ang isang mananampalataya, alam natin yung sagot ng mga mahahalagang mga tanong sa buhay. Halimbawa, some questions are, is there life after death? And if there is life after death, where do I go when I die? You know, the Bible is very clear. The Bible tells us, uh, Hebrews 9.27, it is appointed unto man wants to die. Okay? It is inescapable. All of us, unless the Lord comes very soon, all of us will experience death. Unless the Lord returns. Job 14 verse 5, the Bible says, Seeing his days are determined. Yung mga araw natin bilang na yan. Alam ng Panginoon kung ilang araw tayo dito. The number of his months are with thee. Kahit yung mga buwan sa buhay natin, the Lord knows about that. Thou was appointed his bounds that he cannot pass. See, meron ng boundary. Kapag dumating na dyan, hindi na tayo lalagpas sa boundary na yan. Amen. Meron tayong appointment. All of us has an appointment with that. Amen. But you know what? If you are a Christian, if you are a believer of Jesus Christ, we can say with David, Yea, do I walk through the valley of shadow of death? I will fear no evil. I am not afraid to die. Amen? Amen. You know why? Because we know where we are going. In Jesus, we are prepared for death. In Jesus, we are prepared for death. 2 Timothy 4, 6, the Apostle Paul said, For I am now ready to be offered. He was ready, he was ready to die. In Philippians chapter 1, verse number 21, I love this verse. This is one of the verses I, I, I learned to memorize growing up. Philippians 1.21, the Bible says, For to me, to live is Christ, Christ and to die is gain. To die is gain. Can you imagine that? To die is gain. We are prepared for that. Why? Because of the Lord Jesus Christ. That's why, kung may nakikita, I remember my father when, when the doctor said, he only had uh, six months to live. Uh, that was... Uh, July when I went to uh, to see him, nung sinabi ng doktor na he only has six months to live, and he he looks strong at, at that point. He died of a plastic anemia, and parang hindi kami makapaniwala na uh, he can move, he can uh, parang normal lang siya. But the doctor said he only has six months. At first we did not tell him, but when we uh, told him what the doctor said, uh, he was very peaceful. He was not worried. In fact, uh, I would remember relatives and friends who would come to our house and uh, try to cheer him up, to encourage him. But he would end up encouraging them. You would not see him like a parang nalulungkot siya. He was never like that. And if he is tired, he would say, Oh, dito muna kayo because I am busy. I, uh, I am busy. I am busy sleeping. He, he would joke with, with visitors. He had peace. You never see fear in him, uh, even though he knew, uh, the doctor said he only has six months, and indeed he passed, uh, uh, that was July, and by January, he went home to be with the Lord. Our affairs has been arranged. We know where we are going, when we die, when I die, I know I am going to heaven. Amen. The Bible says, uh, if you believe in Jesus Christ, if you believe in Jesus Christ, Jesus said, I will go and prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself. I know where I'm going. Amen? Amen. The Lord Jesus Christ conquered death. And in Jesus Christ, we are prepared for death. For death. Number five, our account has been paid. Our account has been paid. We are peace because our sin debt Yung ating napakalaking utang has been paid. The Bible tells us in these verses 
Genesis chapter 2 verse number 17, the Lord said to Abel, to Abel, to Abel, He said, In the day that thou eatest thereof, thou shalt truly die. So we see that the, the punishment or the payment of sin is death. So when God pronounced the curse in Genesis chapter 3 verse number 19, For thus thou art, and unto thus shalt thou return. God said, God told the Adam, Ezekiel chapter 18, verse number 4, and verse number 20, the Bible says, A soul that sinned, it shall die. Romans chapter 5, verse number 12, the Bible says, As by one man sin entered into the world, and death by sin, and so death pass upon all men for that all have sinned. Romans 6, 23, the Bible says, For the wages of sin is death. See, the wages of sin is death. The price for our sin is death, but Jesus Christ paid for our uh, for our sin debt. The price of our sin has been paid, and our sin account with God has been settled when we trust Jesus Christ as our personal Savior. Meron tayong utang na hindi natin kaya kaya bayaran, and that is our uh, yung yung ating mga kasalanan. But when we believe in Jesus Christ, when we trust in Jesus Christ. As our Savior, our sin account with God has been settled. So as far as God is concerned, my sins are already settled. Amen. 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 Your sins are already settled if you trusted in Jesus Christ as your personal Savior. Amen. Galatians chapter 5 verse number 1, the Bible says here, Stand fast therefore in the liberty wherewith Christ have made us free. So we are already free. And be not entangled again with the yoke of bondage. And you can read the other verse in the book of Romans. The Lord Jesus Christ is our Shiloh. He is the one who gives us peace. He is the one who gives us rest. In the Lord Jesus Christ we are secure. So three things before we close. God's peace is always, you write the word, available. It is always available. If you need it, and if your life is right with the Lord, His peace is always available. I like that verse in Psalms 119-165, the Bible says, Great peace of day which love thy Lord. Great peace. Psalms 29 verse number 11, the Bible says, and the Lord will give strength unto His people. The Lord will bless His people with peace. So God's peace is always available. But now what is bothering you tonight? What is it that bothers you? What is it that you are worried about? Folks, it's useless. If you are a Christian, if you are a child of God, it's useless to worry about anything. Because Jesus Christ is your shield. He is our peace. He is our rest. Not only that God's peace is always available, God's peace is abundant. God's peace is satisfying. Isaiah chapter 23 verse number 6, the Bible says, Thou will keep him in perfect peace. Please mark this verse. If you don't remember any verse I tell you tonight, please remember Isaiah 26 verse 3. Thou will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on thee because he trusted in thee. Do you trust in the Lord Jesus Christ? Do you trust him with your soul? Do you trust him with your finances? Do you trust him with your health? If you trust the Lord Jesus Christ, you don't have to worry about anything. In Philippians chapter 4 verse number 7, uh, the, the peace that the Lord Jesus Christ gives is described as a peace that passes all understanding. God's peace is always available. God's peace is abundant. God's peace is our asylum. When storm comes, we are at peace knowing that the Lord Jesus is in absolute control. Kung meron tayong pinagdadaanan ng problema, we can still have peace. You know why? Because we know that the Lord Jesus Christ is in the throne and that the Lord Jesus Christ is in control. Psalms chapter 4 verse number 8. The Bible says, I will both lay me down in peace and sleep, for thou, Lord, only makes me dwell in safety. Psalms chapter 4, verse number 8. 
let's uh, read these few verses and before we before we close. Chapter 4, verse number 8. The Bible says, I will, this verse, I will both lay me down in peace and sleep. For thou, Lord, only makest me dwell in safety. Another verse in chapter 46, Psalms 46, verses 1 and 2. The Bible says, God is our refuge and strength, our very present help in trouble. Listen to that verse. God is our refuge. That means we can flee to Him. He is our refuge and strength, our very present help in trouble. When you need Him, the Lord Jesus Christ is there. God is there for you and I. Verse number 2. Therefore, we, uh, therefore, will not we fear Though the earth be removed, and though the mountains be carried into the midst of the sea, though the waters that of roar and be troubled, though the mountains shake with the swelling of the rough cellar, we can still have peace. Why? Because we have the Lord. And we know that the Lord is in control. Jesus Christ is our shield. He is our peace. He is our rest. In the Lord Jesus Christ, we are totally secure. Amen? Amen. Amen. So don't worry about anything. The only thing that the Lord wants you to do is trust Him. And when you have burdens, when you have worries, when you have problems, you come to Him. And trust Him with whatever problem, with whatever worries that you face in life. Loving Heavenly Father, we thank you. For this, uh, for this short message, Lord, that you have given us, Lord, this evening. Uh, about the Lord Jesus Christ, our peace, our rest, and in Him we have security. Lord, thank you for being our shield. Lord, we know that in this world a lot of things bothers us, a lot of things troubles us. But Lord, we thank you for the peace that you offer to us. And that the peace that you want us, Lord, to enjoy. Lord, I pray for each one that's here tonight. I pray, Lord, that this simple message will be remembered and will be cherished. We ask all these things in Jesus' name. Would you bow your head, please? Close your eyes. No one looking around tonight.